Hi, how's it going? It's Ryan Ao here from Ao Productions for part two of our five part series on how to create your own video for your business, for commercial marketing. So we here at Ao Productions um, use scripts, storyboards, and mood boards often with our clients to help vastly increase the ROI for the production and the way that that works is pre-production is an essential part of the process like I mentioned last week. So what we started with last week was talking about asking the decisive questions about you know who's your target audience, what's the message, why are you doing this video, um, just creating some sort of document that prepares kind of a brief of the whole Aurora project so that as the project goes along, you end up referring back to that, especially when things start drifting and um, you start losing focus, you can always bring yourself back to the original document, the brief that you created. And that really helps your company all stay on the same page with whoever's producing the video, whether that be inside your company or a production company like AO. So I wanted to let you know too, we have a special treat for you. So hang on through the end of the video and we have uh, my assistant, Danielle Mathias, who does behind the scenes video and, or, and mostly stills as a unit stills photographer in um, lots of major productions um, from TV to movies and commercials. So she's here, she's gonna talk to us a little bit about what she sees on the big sets that she works on too. Hey Bruce, I see you're watching, good to see ya. All right, so here's an example of uh, a script. We're gonna get into this first. So what you would see here on a script normally is um, little descriptions of like the scene. So we go interior garage, daytime. We see the legs of mom. She's a, a 30 something attractive non-white. She walks up along the side of the car. Her finger glides the edges. We slowly move up her body. She's wearing a dress with a slit up the side to land on her smiling face. We hear an engine. And so then we're gonna describe the little sound effects. So we go, we also faintly hear racetrack noises such as announcers and other cars. So you can see the detail that goes into even a script where it's not just the lines, it's actually describing what the video is gonna look and feel like so that everybody on the set, everybody in the, the production company, as well as your business is on the same page. And then what we can do, um, if you don't have a script, let's say you have a video that's just gonna be a collage set to music and there is no script. Hi Michael, how's it going? Good to see you, glad you're here. I know you like to do video, Michael. So this is a little bit of a help for you too, I hope. Um, one of the things that we do with a collage type video or even a scripted video, hey Steven, um, is a mood board. So uh, the first thing that we would do with a mood board is just go on the internet and grab a bunch of inspiring photos either off Google or stock photo sites or even screen grabs from inspirational videos. And what we do is we just put together a little collage. So here's a car commercial we just made this past weekend, and this is our mood board for it. And you can see we described some of the looks that we wanted. We want veiling, like the dreamy look over the lens, like you would see right here. We put like pieces of glass over the lens or in post-production, we can put little lens flares and stuff. Um, thanks, Steven, glad you think it looks good. I agree. Um, we would um, describe that we want a bunch of low light shots. Um, we would describe our color palette, so blue, red, pink colors. Drive, describe the feeling, we want it dramatic, emotional, passionate, fast. So here's some pictures that we pulled off other videos or off the internet to kind of show the mood. All right, and this is something we, we even kept with us on set and refer to it quite a bit on set when we're setting up lighting or we're trying to describe like, for example, we want the car to look like it's lit along the edges in a dark background so then we, we can easily recreate the look that we're all going for as a team. And then the next thing we would do after a mood board and then actually even before the script if there even is a script is we would create a storyboard. So the storyboard is so now we've got a bunch of shots that we've pulled off the internet and now we start getting even more specific we say okay in scene one here we want to have a wide handheld shot we're gonna have our young millennial couple sitting and surrounded or lying down surrounded by boxes and we're gonna and we even put we're gonna cue the uplifting emotional background music here and then you would go to scene two and then we would do the same thing all throughout the video just kind of describing with a picture and some words the scene and now sometimes as you notice in hollywood they use a handheld i mean a, a hand-drawn storyboard or even sometimes they get so nice as to create um 
uh, actually like just like really beautiful animated storyboards and we have one for the um, the Hyundai project which I have to find and print out because it got left on set so once I find that I'll put that in the comments of this video so you can see a really well done hand-drawn storyboard thanks to Shannon Steed our art director on set um, another type of storyboard that I like to do too is once you've scouted the location which is a super important part of the production process is you can even stick your photos of the exact location on the exact scene so here we knew we were gonna do with Demi's music video, a shower scene, and in a grungy looking shower. Well, we found a grungy looking shower on our location, so we just stuck that picture down there so we knew exactly where we were going and what it looked like. And it even helps to do it at the right time of day so you can see the lighting and figure out where the sun's gonna be and all that. So as you can see, you know, here we, we have a, a, a shot of what it looked like in Demi's video of her looking out a window in a warehouse, and then we had a location figured out for that, so we just put a picture there. So, and then the step after that would be once you've got your storyboard script and mood board done, then Danielle's going to come out and teach us a little about a shot list. You want to tell us about what, what you do with shot lists on set and how a good shot list helps organize the whole thing? <laughs> she says no. Well, anyways, this is a shot list I've got from our shoot with Demi. And on it, it says your shots, your shot list, because we also create you know, a number for each scene, like you saw on the storyboard, like right here, you see the number. So that's scene 13. So then on our shot list, we would say that's scene 13 or whatever the number reference is to it. And we have all the shots for that scene and describing them window light with negative fill, white location, white room. And we're going to tell the shoot schedule 9am to 9.30am. So we break it down so that we have a running schedule of the whole day and then we can stay on track. So that's kind of the basics of a really, really planned out video production. And pre-production is honestly the hugest part of making a video go well. So Danielle, can you answer a quick question for me? Sure. Come up here and sit here. All right, so this is Danielle. Our, look, we're even matching today. Yay. Our red floral outfits. <laughs> She's a unit stills photographer in, I wouldn't say Hollywood, but major productions that come out of Hollywood in Portland and LA and other places, New York, Atlanta, right? Yeah. Tell us a little more about what kind of sets you've been on. Um, I worked on a couple projects here in Portland. I worked on Portlandia and Grimm Portlandia, and Grimm. some short films. In New York, I worked on bigger budgets with um, larger productions with big sets and um, What's your website so they can now and go check out your photo? It's my first and last name at Gmail, so, or at dot com. Dot com. <laughs> Danielle, uh, Mathias Danielle Mathias dot com. Dot yeah. com. M A T H I A S. Yeah. Yeah. And then two N's or two L's? Danielle. D A N I E L L E M A T H I A S. Dot com. And dot we'll com. put that in the links below. Yeah. But yeah, so um, her work is really good because she um, takes stills of what's actually being filmed on camera. So that they can use that for marketing posters all mm -hmm. that um, and a lot of her work um, is used in behind the scenes marketing and stuff and that's a really important thing to do on pretty much every set we try to bring you up and hire you yeah um, every every shoot needs a, a stills photographer because you're gonna use more than just the video for your marketing right Absolutely. you're gonna create posts you're gonna share posters and yeah yeah put them on your website yeah and you want to keep everything consistent so I'll yeah. shoot stills they might refer to me to go back you know, if they have to have a pickup day and we pick up a scene, we'll okay. say, hey, pull cool, still from the scene. Let's make sure everything's in the right spot. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And so with the, on that note, like, do you have any um, thing to say about pre-production documents that you really think is a wise way to help the, the, the production sm flow um, smoothly? I say the more the better, but just keep it concise so people don't get confused. Have a really straightforward idea of what you want. Okay. Um, as far as color palette and lighting and, um, you know, obviously have your locations dialed in. Right. Yeah. Okay. Just lots of planning. Yeah. Color palette. Can you speak a little bit to color palette? We, we, we had a color palette this weekend on um, a Hyundai shoot. Yeah. I mean, anybody but started, like, study, study, study color study theory, study theory. <laughs> um, kind of knows that certain colors work best with others, but also you can use that to create a little bit of tension. Um, okay. Kind of subconsciously, I think people, they'll see certain colors together and they'll naturally have a, a, a falling for it. I 
and be really into it. But if you kind of jumble that up, it throws right. people off and that adds tension. You can make things a very comfortable scene, you know, a family eating dinner, but if the color's off, it can make it not so comfortable. Yeah. And sometimes um, you want to do that. Yeah. So like complementary colors on the color wheels would create a comfortable scene and maybe like tertiary or even. Yeah. Just like something that's pleasing to the eye could create, you know, a very soft and inviting environment. But if right. you throw that off, yeah. naturally people are not going to feel so comfortable. Okay, cool. Um, so you can create tension with that. Cool. Yeah, so it's also important to pick your color palette before you shoot and throw that on the color board or the storyboard. Mm -hmm. Call it your color palette. So I'll throw that, once I get that graphic, I'll throw that in the comments. You can check it out in a little bit here. And you can see an example of that color palette we used this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Great. Thanks for thanks for sharing. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> so thanks you guys for watching. Hey Scott, it's good to see you. Um, hopefully this helps you guys get a little bit more understanding of why pre-production is important and I will tell you once I started doing pre-production for AO Productions uh, a couple of years ago you, you just just definitely see um, two things a huge if more um, amount of more efficiency during the actual production the filming of the of the shoot and then in post-production it's just amazing how when you have footage to work with that has been well thought out and well planned out how it's easier to edit together and then you get a product that just looks f far more meaningful well thought out and impactful to your target audience than if you just didn't plan it out and there's no documents made when you're when you're just kind of running gunning shooting on a wing in a prayer you can kind of get your vision and ideas lost in translation because when you're on set there's so much to think about and you're dealing with lighting and you're dealing with actors who might need to have the vision explained to them but it's not written down and they haven't seen it yet and they don't understand it so that kind of gets a little bit lost in translation and then when you're looking at a, um, a body of footage that you've shot with no pre-production it's hard to work with and it definitely doesn't come out as well so I highly encourage you all to think about you know the storyboard the mood board and the script and if you ever need any help AO Productions is here. We'd love to help you. RyanAO.com. All right, talk to you later. Have a good day.